We have kids in our school system, elementary school even, who are hurting. Nafshi is thicker problems. Chayla nafesh. We didn't have this 50 years ago. Depression, trauma, abuse, neglect, bipolar symptoms, ADD symptoms, ADHD, so much going on in the brain. Used to be a Rebbe walked into the room, everybody's here, hi, I'm here, ready to learn. Gvaldig. Trauma, trauma, traumatized, and this problem and that problem didn't exist. We have so much now going on. Shmiel David Friedman brings down an amazing story in Bedidi Hava Uvda, which we can learn so much about. So I want to teach you a story that he brings down, which we can learn from. We can mamish practically save lives with this story. There was a Kailing Oman many years ago, and he was nifter young, it was a very big tragedy, and he left a young wife with a bunch of kids, a whole house full of kids. The nine and a half year old boy shut down, emotionally shut down. He didn't keep up in the classroom, he developed social anxiety, didn't play with friends, he lost his friends, he had depression, he had all kinds of, he was very messed up, he shut down. After a long time, they had no bravery, they didn't know what to do. They went to the top professional of the time. And the professional of those, those times, they didn't have all the beautiful names that we have today, but basically you diagnosed him with ADD and ADHD and depression and social anxiety and all kinds of stuff. And he told the parents that this is what you have to do. First of all, he should not go to school anymore, only 20 minutes a day. It's too much for him. You have to get tutors to teach him Lashon Kaidish, Hebrew studies, and for the Gaish studies, for social studies and, and math and well, whatever they were learning over there. And tutors and tutors and tutors and tutors. And then you have to have a lot of therapy sessions. And then you have to put him on medication. He needs to be on meds. That was what the top professional diagnosed and said that he has to do. This family had no money. There was no breadwinner anymore. It was a Kyle family to begin with, and the mother didn't know what to do. So she had a relative, the Shashiva of Chibin, Schus Yogan Alenu, Rebbe Vram Ganachavsky. And she went to pour out her heart by her cousin, by her relative, the great Shashiva of Chibin. And she told him what happened to her son, nine and a half years old, mamish emotionally disturbed and shut down. And then we took him to the professional. The professional says all of this is going to cost thousands and thousands of dollars. Can you please help me give, give, give me money? Can you give us financial assistance? They did not ask him for help with the child. They asked for financial assistance. But he heard the story and he said, would it be okay if I can meet with the boy? She said, of course, I'll bring him tomorrow. They made up the next day, tomorrow, they'll bring the boy to the Shiva's office. The next day, she comes with the nine and a half year old boy. Our cousin, the Rosh Hashiva, wants to meet with you. He walks into the room, the Rosh Hashiva sees him in his office, and he sits down on the floor. The Rosh Hashiva sits down on the floor. He motions over to the kid, come, sit on the floor. Listen to every piece of this, the Ga'inus. The first step, be comfortable, go to their space. Come here. He showed him, I'm not, gonna, I'm not here to hurt you. I'm not going to give you musr. Right? I'm, I'm safe. Come sit. Sits on the floor. Schmoozes with him. He had a candy. He gave him a candy. Schmoozes with him. What kind of toys do you like? What kind of game do you like? Decided tic-tac-toe. Good. He had a pen and paper. They started playing tic-tac-toe. For a few hours, he sat on the floor, and he schmoozed with this kid, played with him. No, no talking about anything. After a few hours, he said, okay, i got to go back to work. Tells his mother, can you do me a favor? Can you bring him back tomorrow? The next day again, the boy comes in, Rosh Hashiva on the floor. He already brought another toy from his house. He had it waiting for him. He knew what he liked, and he's playing for a few hours with him on the floor. And the next day, please come back again. After a few weeks, the Rosh Hashiva tells the boy, you know, we have a big problem. I really enjoy playing with you here on the floor. Problem is, you know, you're supposed to be in yeshiva, and I'm supposed to be a rush yeshiva. I have a yeshiva to run, and we can't go on like this all the time playing. So I, I would like you to go to, tomorrow to yeshiva, and I'm giving you a riddle. I want to play a new kind of game with you. I'm giving you a riddle to ask all the boys in your class, and whoever is going to answer it, you come back a few days later, you tell me who it was. I'm going to give you a candy, a toy, whatever, to give to that kid. So the kid is intrigued. Let me hear the riddle. So yeshiva asks him. Here's the first riddle. He asks them like this. What do you make a bracha on? Put in your mouth, but you don't swallow. Think about it. A shaifer. 
make a bracha, you put it in your mouth, you don't swallow. The kid thought it was great. The next day he went to yeshiva. Instead of walking in depressed, and uh, where were you with it? He said, I, I, I was with the reshiva of Chibin, and he gave me a riddle, and if anybody could figure it out, then uh, he's going to give a gift. Unbelievable, everyone's into it. And a couple of days later, he goes back, he tells his shiva that this and this boy got an answer, he gives him the gift, the, the, the toy, gives him the stuff, gives him another riddle, comes back a few days later, and the boys already were following him to, you know, to go with him. One boy wanted to go with him, he going to his shiva, he saw the way his shiva was talking to him, built up his self-esteem, a couple of weeks goes by, and the social anxiety is gone, he's already playing recess with the boys, he got friendly with the other boys, the better boys, and he started learning again, and within a few months, all of the problems went bye-bye. He didn't need therapy, he didn't need tutors, he didn't need medication, nothing. What do we learn from this story? There are some problems, okay, what and who and where and why, that's... There are some of our kids' problems that they don't need go to the therapy, go to the therapist, go get this diagnosis and that pill and this pill. Some of them need Attention. I said attention deficit disorder, ADD. Attention deficit disorder means that this child could be that the disorder, he's getting a deficit amount of attention. You're not giving him enough attention. Sit on the floor with him. Now the kid needs attention and he goes to yeshiva and he's overwhelmed because of whatever problem is going on in his life. He comes home and you did homework, but there's no, there's no time to breathe. Nobody's playing with you. You're, you're in process, in a machine. Go take a shower, take a bath, get your stuff, do your homework, and homework, and homework. Some kids are going through problems and they don't need pills. Some of them need not ADD, they need a DAD. Some of them need to have a father who's gonna spend time with them. And so many fathers are like, I'm a Rosh I'm that. Get off your high horse. You're not more chashev than the Shiva of Chibin. And this goes for the Rabbeim, this goes for the teachers, for the Manalim, and the Shashivas. Before we send somebody off, some kids definitely need therapy. I'm not anti anything. But some kids could be saved from so much tutors and trauma and, and, and being different and being on pills so many times. If we would get off of our horse and spend the time wasting time, the Shivas wasted hours and hours, it was an investment. He invested into this neshama. He wasn't even asked to. They came for financial aid, but he knew it doesn't make sense. Something shut off. Well, here's what we learn. When kids shut off, you have to reignite them. They don't need a whole new mechanical engine. They don't need a whole thing. No, no, no. They're good. So many teachers and parents. Do you remember the kid last year, two years ago, three years ago, four years ago? Before the shutdown. So why do you think that all of that is gone? Something happened, the kid shut down. A trauma, a problem, fine. Reignite the kid. Build the self-esteem. The first step is get on the floor with the kid. Ba'asher Husham, where he is at. What does he like to do? Listen to some music with him, play an Xbox game, whatever the kid is doing, every kid is different. But whatever they're doing, get on to his level. Ba'asher Husham, the way he is, right? and then spend a lot of time with there until you're ready to make that next move. And the next move was, I enjoy your time, but and I need you to do that, and I'm gonna teach you how to do it. I'm gonna build your self-esteem. The kid could have walked into school feeling so tzibrachin, everybody's looking at me, where were you? Oh, he lost his father. Instead, he walked in with a riddle from the Chibin Rosh Hashiva, and a candy, and a prize, and he's a hero, and everybody's interested, and everybody's going home and asking their fathers and their mothers, genius! Genius! Build up a kid. That's how you build somebody up. We're not all Shabino Shashiva, we're not all such geniuses, but if we understand the map, that that's the medicine to heal many times Sibrachenkeit. Many times we can heal the diagnosis and the social anxiety and the depression. Many times can be dealt with somebody who's older and caring, can sit on the floor and play with the kid and build that relationship and boost them with the self-esteem. Who knows, who knows what we could save hours and hours of sitting in the therapist's office, hours and hours of getting pills, of going to, to tutors and all of that. Many times the kids come home, they're shvach and yeshiva, we give them tutors, more pain at home, more pain. If we would sit and play with them on the floor, it could be they wouldn't need a tutor. It won't work for everybody. But a lot of our kids, if the source of the problem is a nafshiistika problem, 
then the tutor and the medicine and the therapy is a band-aid. Get to the root of the problem. Give them a backing of a father, a mother, grandparents, Zaydis, we need you to jump in now. Grandfathers used to be removed. Now we need you for your grandchildren. Go visit them in yeshiva. Pick them up for lunch by recess once a week. The yeshiva doesn't mind if they miss recess in fourth grade, in sixth grade, in Masifta. Go visit them. Don't fahar them. Sit on the floor with them. You hear me? Sit on the floor with them. They have enough pressure to learn when they're happy Hashem. And I'm not just talking about off the derech, the healthy ones. There are so many nafshi sticker problems that are shooting at our kids and knocking them out at older ages where we didn't even see it. Invest in them today. Invest in them with fun. Take them out. If you can take them bowling, take them bowling. If you can take them to shoot pool, it depends on your, your lifestyle. I'm not telling you to do anything wrong. What could you do that's fun? Just a board game? Play boggle, play I don't know, whatever it is, tic-tac-toe, chess. But get off your chair, get off your high and mighty horse, and get on the floor with your kids and your grandchildren. They're your children. Don't, you're not so hush of. Sit on the floor, play with them, get to know them on their level. When they need you, you'll have access to them. You know how many parents, their kids are going through such difficulty and you hear from the kids, I couldn't talk to my father, I couldn't talk to my mother, and imagine they couldn't do it because my father's so chashiv, my mother's so important. Imam is burying your kids in, in all of your chashivas. And sometimes you see kids say, I always felt I could talk to my father, and the father's a pashtayid. Be pashit. Be pashit. When it comes to your children, be a pashtayid. Don't be so high and mighty. It's very difficult when you're high and mighty to raise kids who feel that they can open up to you. We're in a dar where they have secrets, where things happen to them, where they have struggles. And if they think that you can't relate to struggles, nothing's going to happen. Get off, off your feet, off your horse, off your high. Get on the floor. Just play with them. Just chill. Just relax in their space. What they like doing. Build that rapport with them. And you'll come up with a chachmadika way to get them to reboost their self-esteem. The ones who are suffering, they should go into school. They should feel good about themselves. My Zaidi took me to school. We need the grandfathers to step up to the plate. The Rosh Hashanah We need, not in the name of, the, you, I shouldn't dress like that. Stop with the Musa, Teichacha. Become loving. Become Zaidis and Babis and bake your cookies for them. And go to the young Dur and let them feel that they have people who back me. I'm not alone in this world. I'm not alone in this world. So many kids feel alone. And especially the struggling kids, before you send to the therapist and all the psychiatrists and all the medication, get off your high horse. Sit on the floor. See what happens. And if we do this, we'll save a lot of pain from our kids. We have to really do it. You'll see. You'll see that the kids have more stamina. They have more self-esteem. They're able to have a lot of diseases and infections that aren't, they're not going to stick to them. They'll, they'll get over because they have back. They feel good about themselves. They know that I have, I have a grandfather. He's, I'm his favorite. That's the kunst. The kunst is to make every grandchild and every child feel that way because those kids have a, a higher chance of getting over the bad things that happen to them. And if they can't, and chas v'shalom, they, they end up in trouble, that relationship is going to be the one, that relationship to pull them out so let's learn what we learned about the nefesh adam, nefesh v'yid, emotional problems, need you to go down off your chair onto the floor with the child, give him the safety and the space of that safe relationship, and when you're ready, when the child is ready, and you have the chachma to know when, you can then figure out how to boost the self-esteem, heal the problem, and get them back on top of their game, of course with tremendous yatz